guys. Um, so today, what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna do a a quick a quick video about uh, the Flash Forge Adventure Three, uh, right? Not not the new V two, not the Adventure Four, but the original Adventure Three. Um, I did a review back in 2020 on this, um, and we'll look at that in a little bit. But um, this here, the Adventure 3, right? Best choice for family, schools, workshop, 3D printing begin beginners. Um, and my review, um, I, I was right along those lines, right? So um, you look here, great 3D printer for beginners, especially for kids, and maybe one of the best in that regard for its ease of use and reliability, right? So I even quote reliability here. So, and originally it, it that that was the case, right? So, um, I had great great experience with this off, you know, right off. Uh, printed a lot of stuff. Um, it was going nonstop for you know, the first few weeks. I, I we owned it. Uh, my son liked it. Um, bought it for my son for his birthday, actually. So, after a few weeks, you know, maybe a month of using it, um, we started getting what most people got with this printer um, and that was extruder skip so took the extruder apart cleaned it um, you know looked looked over it completely you know this is the extruder this is the the upgraded v2 version um, but it still had the same issues right so you had this tiny little gear here um, and the gear was was even stranger than most as it had basically I wish we could get, you know, a good pick. Oh, here we go. So look at this. So had had this little toothed path um, along it, and what would happen is is that that gear was moving. It would it would get packed in with with um, filament dust, right? And then it would just slip, and then you did skipping, right? And it was bad, loud very bad skipping prints would start failing um, you know you'd take the entire extruder apart um, you know take a, a bristled brush clean that out and you might get one or two more prints out of it and then the thing would start skipping again um, and it was just it was so frustrating because the original experience with the printer was great right it printed flawlessly and, it, and the quality of the prints were just great small build volume but you could do a lot of stuff on it um, so after about a month month and a half um, of use and the frustration of trying to fix the the extruder skipping issue you know uh, coming up here you know first people would say oh well you know it's the it's the Bowden tube you know the Bowden tube moves so there was a the part you could print to kind of jam in here to make sure that that stayed tight so that that Bowden tube didn't uh, didn't move up and down um, that didn't solve it um, you know and then uh, you know people said oh well you know replace the replace the gear you know that'll help I mean, so after frustration of, of messing with this thing over and over and over I basically stuffed it in a closet for three years um, didn't really use it much you'd pull it out and there were ways to get around it where you could you could heat the extruder up to you know 240 degrees and and run a filament change feeding filament feeding filament and base until basically the skipping stopped and then immediately run your print and then you'd be fine but if that print stopped and you immediately started another print the extruder would skip you'd have to heat the thing up again force a bunch of filament down through it until it stopped skipping and then make another print it was just frustrating so um, it was in a it was in a closet for a long time um, and then basically I took it out right I was like oh there's got to be a way to to fix this um, there's got to be a way to solve the the strange um, extruder skip right so so after taking it out and figuring out what I was gonna do with it I was like I'm just gonna throw I'm gonna throw an extruder on right I'm gonna I'm going to gut the existing one and I'm going to try something different. So that's what I've got here, right? So pulled out the extruder, which kind of sat here, bolted to this, bolted to this plastic bracket with these two bolts of the motor sitting behind it. 
um, that set there. It did have a filament runout sensor in it. Um, a printer of this size, you know, really doesn't need to have that. So I've removed the filament runout sensor altogether. So what I've done is, and again, this is this is the stock motor, right? This is the stock motor that came with the Adventure. Um, I printed this bracket here for a standard, you know, stepper motor bracket. Um, and then this is off an old Ender 3, right? And I think it was an Ender 3 uh, V2 or Ender 3 Pro, I believe, um, maybe an original. So put that out, you know, bolted that all together. Um, filament feeds in actually better than it did before. You kind of had to angle it in and it fed down into here and up into the extruder. Now it just goes directly straight up into the extruder um, using some Capricorn tubing. I didn't want to kind of force it down in through here. Um, it, the Bowden tube originally went in through that little slot there, um, if you can see. But this here would, would have been too tight, you know, too tight of a radius to kind of force that down through. So I was like, oh, well, I got some extra stuff or a long piece of Capricorn tubing. So I came up down through and drilled through this polycarbonate plate um, and uh, screwed in a, threaded it and screwed in a coupler uh, where that where that Bowden tube sits and uh, feeds down through. Um, and then it goes into the extruder. Um, so the, the quality of the prints really haven't changed, right? So here's, I've only printed a couple of benches from it, but Here's a couple of benches. Uh, they're not perfect, uh, but they're decent, you know. And uh, there's definitely some tuning needing. Um, you know, there's some uh, there's some over extrusion and some some strange artifacts. Um, but the important thing is is the extruder doesn't skip anymore, right? So it it just prints and it's super quiet. I don't have to worry about it. Um, I can start and stop prints. Um, without having having that extruder skipping, uh, that annoying problem. So this seems to, to have fixed the issue. So after three years, two and a half years of this thing kind of sitting dormant in a closet, um, we can now print with it, right? So um, this is a great little PLA machine. Uh, it actually prints ABS pretty good too. Um, it is full, well, it was fully enclosed. And now that you have the full-size spool, spools on the side, um, I am kind of thinking about designing kind of a, a housing for that to cover that and for the spool to sit out, maybe bump this out a little further and kind of enclose that somehow um, just to kind of make it aesthetically more, more pleasing. Um, but it prints, right? No more skipping. So, you know, I hope this helps somebody, you know, is this worth somebody doing? Maybe not. Um, they had the part, so I was just tinkering around. It was either get rid of the printer, you know, trash the printer, or um, or try to fix it. So, but like I said, is this worth you doing it? I don't know. If you like this printer, the quality, the, the, the printer prints well. Um, it's just that poor extruder, that that, that poor design. So, um, if you have a extruder lying around and you want to print a bracket, um, you know, you can do this, and uh, no more skipping. Well, thanks, guys. I hope you like this short video and uh, leave some some comments down below whether you think this was worth it um, or if this thing should have just uh, gone in the dumpster. All right. Thanks.